Welcome back to the Nerd Effect Podcast. We're on episode number 37. I am one of your hosts, Dustin Vancouver, joined by my crew. Michael Morgan. Mason Ireland. Nikki Prindle. Yay! Yay! Nikki Prindle, who won't talk into her microphone. I'm sorry, I'm drawing a fox acorn. Which is... Which is a great segue into our segment because we're going to be talking about mythology. Cause Welcome. That is a very mythical creature. Yes. It's made up by our very own Nikki Prindle. It's magnificent. Can and I use it in a game? And if you ever see yes. one. Yes. Of- <laughs> as long as it uses Gary and it's super effective. So. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay. So if you find a fox of corn in the wild, does it grant you like wishes or something? No. It just headbutts you in the groin. Oh, I don't like this mythical. Creature. Yeah, I don't like this one either. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds scrotally painful. <laughs> oh, I'm writing that scrotally painful. painful. <laughs> 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 Testicular trauma. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather avoid that as much as possible. Yeah. I heard they've got a bunch of foxcorn graves in. (laughs) So now we got to use the term uh, in North Korea. Yes. (laughs) So foxcorn uses uh, headbutt. It is super groinally painful. Scrotally painful. Okay. (laughs) Minus ten XP. Lose a turn. Gary is super. (laughs) Because you can't get up. It's It's CR over nine thousand. Oh. It's because his name's Gary and he's a Pokemon, so he says. That's why he uses Gary. <laughs> it's super effective. He's kind of cute. By the make way, a, yeah, I make wanna... a reflex save to avoid that one. Yeah. Oh, you fail. Yeah. Make a reflex. Oh, you fail again. What am I rolling against? 3,000. <laughs> it said it's super effective. Oh, ultra super duper ultra. effective EX plus alpha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good job, Dude, we're in a Street Fighter game? <laughs> yep. Yeah. He rolled good, 23, good job, like what, 3,000 times in a row? No. <laughs> and I am one of your hosts, Dustin Vancouver. <laughs> wait, wait, we already went through that. We already went through <laughs> that. <laughs> nice, see, that's how, Sorry that's how fried my brain is. Sorry, magnificent creature. We never had Gary. tracks to begin with. You're right. I'm sorry I even brought up the idea that we had tracks. Yep, no rails here. Nope. Uh, nope. No rail shooters. You no. can't derail if you're an off road vehicle. You can flip over. Oh my god, an off road choo choo train. That would be awesome. Oh god. No, not really. No, that, was, that, that be, sounds horrible. It is not super effective. <laughs> <laughs> it's a train with giant monster truck tires on it. It would be cool looking. Go, 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 uh, go uh, going mudding with your train. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Is that what <laughs> mudding is? Because one of my friends posted this hilarious comment that was like a screen grab from Twitter. And the guy's name was Mudden for Jesus. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what the hell is Mudden? It's just when you take your off-road vehicle out in the middle of nowhere and you start tearing through muddy areas. How's that mm-hmm. for Jesus? Because it's very redneck. Yeah. But yeah. And like rednecks are for redneck. Jesus. Oh, okay. We used to take the Humvees out and go mudden. That was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Your We'd, tax uh, dollars at work, folks. <laughs> yeah. We were doing training for getting the Humvees unstuck. No, your church um, donations at work. Well, and they, my <laughs> spent the day out of the army. It was oh. actually kind of fun because it actually we actually had to put some a lot of work into getting it stuck. Yeah, so we could try and pull it out, and it pulled right out, and then we just went right back to bed. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey. bam! Oh man, if you're referring to that as mudding, you're doing it wrong. Oh, putting it in the butt. Oh, oh no! Don't make that be mudding. <laughs> because that makes mudden for Jesus worse because the comment so the reason he I have to find this now I have to find this so I can read it to you guys because the actual comment welcome to the mythology episode folks yeah. oh, there's a place to start it I have to find this because the actual comment that he posted is ridiculous and it's something along the lines of my porn is church. <laughs> Where is this fucking thing? Okay, come on, buddy. My porn is church. Oh yeah, no, it's bad. Like, and it's it's this this guy is apparently a youth pastor because you know how it says like at whatever. Talking about yeah. Jesus, this rigor yeah. mortis boner. The at whatever is his mud for Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to hell. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not. I'm an atheist, and I'm looking at you going, yeah. "You're a little less sacrilegious. religious." I'm okay, sorry. so his actual screen name is Cool Youth Pastor, but it's at Mudden for Jesus. 
And it says, the only porn I watch is church where JC finishes me off with his love. Oh, my God. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> this is a youth pastor. Yeah, so, yeah, mudding for Jesus has whole new meanings now that make a lot more sense in that context. Yeah, disturbingly. Um... Mm. You're welcome. See, mine was good night, folks. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> We've traumatized them enough for one episode. Uh, oh Great. man, Maybe eight. I do apologize. <laughs> Mythology. I'm sorry, you said mud. Baby. Baby. I didn't know what it was until now. So. Oh, oh damn, I don't have it pulled up. Do 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 do. It's better when we do it. Oh, <laughs> uh, see all those all the links you sent me were for nothing. <laughs> okay, so I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> yeah, well, we kind of. Mike, you weren't involved in any of that. You go. You uh, okay? You're sane, right? <laughs> hey, Greek mythology. How about we that can start Zeus? with the Greeks? Yeah. Yay! Going down, laying all them ladies. Probably the most common and well known of the of, of standard the, mythologies. Of the standard European mythologies that we get in, uh, you know. Hey, if Zeus was a modern day. You know, deity that we could look at. He'd be a player, yo. Totally. Zeus is a dick. Well, my Zeus, my kitty Zeus, he's a dick. Well, yeah. But I mean, it seems appropriate. Well, because he was kind of a dick. Yeah, Zeus was kind of. It's not like he ever took care of all these kids. Yeah. (laughs) He said, Mm -hmm. "They're your problem." Yeah, he was a deadbeat dad. He's like, "I'm the baby daddy. That's that's I've contributed. I am done. You're welcome." (laughs) He did leave him all those demigoddy powers, though. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean. And and then he, of course then occasionally people but the get the poor Minotaur. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the poor ba- baby mama of the Minotaur. Oh yeah, no shit. Um and like, you know, Hercules or as it is his name is more properly said, Heracles. I know, let's name the kid after my wife who I'm cheating on with you. Mm-hmm. That'll make my wife happy. Yeah, because that's what every wife wants, really. Uh, yeah. Down inside. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. <sighs> There's Hades, his brother. Yes. Who's blue and voiced by... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. 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 Uh, and the problem see. is I can't remember the name of the actor I can't now. Either. But the problem James Wood. James Thank Wood. You. Okay. Because all of a sudden, I was like, because really I, I knew it wasn't. I knew it was not John Cleese, but I had John Cleese stuck in my head, and I was imagining John Cleese doing the voice of Hades. That would have been way better. And it was really weird. It would have been pretty cool. I think. It would have been way better. <laughs> but not that James Wood is a bad no. actor, but John Cleese has Hades. I have James Woods. Do do. <laughs> Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> So, where do we want to start with the Greek mythology, except for um, Zeus is a douche? Um, in the beginning, there were the Titans. Yes. Who, you know, did things like eat their own children, so their children wouldn't overthrow them. Mm-hmm. Which was, you know, ended up and being a pretty off. smart idea. For a while, for, for a while. Because he they started did. his reign by cutting off his dad's wing. Well, his dad was kind of a douche. Yeah. He was. I mean, Zeus and, got it somewhere. Yeah, I was saying, the apple did not actually fall far from the tree. <clears throat> nope. Mm-hmm. In either regards, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, the thing is, is like, when, like a lot of Zeus's kids, like they were just put upon by Hera, um, basically, because like mm-hmm. Hercules was just trying to be a dude, you know, out doing doing well, Greek Mom, things, Dad, and then he grew I up to be Kevin be Sorbo. A dude. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew there was going to be a Kevin Sorbo. Um, of course there was. Um, you know, he was just trying to be a dude. And Disappointed! Then, and then, you know, nope, nope, I have to go on all these trials. You have to do all this stuff. But I just want to be a dude. Nope. Nope. Yeah, nope. Can't you, be a dude. Can't be a dude. Have to go have trials. Demi God, sorry. Yep. You're a superhero now. I banged your mom. <laughs> yep. You gotta do shit. <laughs> That's how the conversation went. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. I okay. Was, you were there for it? I was there, yeah. Oh, okay. It's cool. Actually, I kind of like how um, they had, like, Zeus actually going along the same path of, you know, his son was going to uh, be the one to take over him. Yeah. And he ended up trying to cut that one off short. Oh, 
can't remember the name of her, but basically Athena's would be Athena's mother, effectively. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's like he had a, you know, talked to the prophets and found out that the, like the second born, which was going to be a son yeah. from this one chick, was going to be the one who overthrows him. Right. So he tricks her and eats her. <laughs> so that wouldn't be a problem. Of, uh, she was already bleeding. pregnant with Athena at the yeah. time. And so what's she do? Well, she, inside Zeus's head, makes the uh, armor and all that for Athena. And basically, um, that's why he's got the headache and the banging in his head and all that. And he goes yeah. to, uh, oh, God, what was his name, too? So many of them. Uh, Hephaedi. Hephaestus. Hephaestus. Hephaestus, yeah. Who uses his axe to cut Zeus's head open, and then, pop, Xena comes out fully, you know, Did you say born. Xena? I, I, he did. I heard he it. He did. Okay, you uh, meant Athena. Athena. You were just thinking about your cute kitty. Yes, I was. She is so damn cute. So, yeah, Athena comes out fully formed. He's got the armor on and everything, and, <laughs> you know, like, hey, screw you, Zeus. <laughs> yeah. Here I am. <laughs> So you're not my real dad, but you are. Was, I mean, but it's confusing because yeah. it's Greek mythology. Yeah, because yeah. they say you know she just forms pro- spont. It's like so they say it like she forms spontaneously from her head. When actually there is a back story to yeah. where she came from. Yep. Yeah, and that's one of the things about like the Greek, uh, the Greek gods in general, and actually a lot of gods um, from back in the day was that. They were flawed. They were more like us. You know, they weren't perfect beings. They were never envisioned as being perfect beings. They were just way more powerful than we were. And there were less of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of inbreeding. Mm-hmm. Lots of inbreeding, yeah. <laughs> of course, that wasn't as uncommon back in the day. No. Mm-hmm. There's also a lot of bestiality. Zeus. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be a bull. Is it still bestiality if it's a god in animal form? I don't really know how that works. but I'm going to go with yeah. I'm going to go fucked up. Is fucked up an answer? Yeah. Fucked up is an answer. Okay. Fucked up is a perfectly valid answer in that case. Yeah. So, yeah. Dustin, being <clears throat> the one of us who probably knows the least about mythology in general, mm-hmm. what questions do you have, if any, so far? Well, I was going to say, and then there's Poseidon, father of Ariel. Oh god! Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Hans Christian Anderson. Okay. Um, no, that was actually they called him King Trident in the Triton. cartoon. Yeah, it's the same, mm, but it's yeah. the same dude. I don't care. Really well, yeah, but uh, Poseid- the the, the, the Poseidon uh, the Poseidon myth um, did persist for a long time. Uh, same same as uh, Manon and McLear, the Greek or the the Celtic equivalent of the Greek god Poseidon. Um, because sailors They're liked having their own gods and being superstitious about it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and somehow the the, the 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 deities of the ocean always got horses. I'm still not sure on that one. But seahorses? Uh, I can understand <laughs> how like the crashing of waves. Thundering to the hooves, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the yeah. Um, but there's uh, also probably some hallucination due to malnutrition. Pause, very possibly. Yeah. A little scurvy going on, you know. Mm, scurvy, oranges? No, thank you. I uh, I would rather have the scurvy. Yeah, that's it. No. <laughs> um. <clears throat> and for anyone who thinks they would rather have scurvy than an orange, go look up the effects of scurvy. They're not pleasant. Scurvy. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. See, the sta- sailors are quite a superstitious lot, and kept hold even much further into um, the monotheism dominated times. Kept a hold of the myths of the uh, sea gods because, well, yeah, they best to hedge your bets. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> kind of how the Romans did when they conquered a new area. They were like. Awesome. These are the Roman gods. We would like to introduce you to them. Who are your gods? Awesome. We're going to start praying to them, too. Why? Hedging our bets. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's easier to absorb a culture if you make it easier for them to adapt to your culture by yeah morphing with their traditions. It's well, I mean, yeah, uh, Roman. Even in Christianity, you see a lot of that. Well, the Romans, yeah, Christmas, basically... Easter, yeah. yeah. Um, you mean Saturnalia? Yeah, Saturnalia, yeah. Ostara. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Romans basically just renamed them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, say yeah. For, for the Greek god, yeah, the Romans did just straight and they up said rename they, they them. They said they were Roman too. They did that. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> the like the god of sleep's name is Hypnos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do you think that's the word where a lot of the yeah. I love it names come from is the Greek names for the yeah. gods. Well, yeah, and like, different Greek names, yeah, yeah, words in different Greek words. Um, like from the nerd or from the nerd effect news that we just recorded, um, they there was the when you were talking about the name of the shrew, they where they mm-hmm. got the um, mikros. Mm-hmm. That's the Greek word that became in English micro. Micro, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. I'm gonna check on that. Go ahead. Okay. No, I'm curious as to what you're checking on. Yeah, I, I too would like to know. <laughs> well, it's gonna take me a while to find it, but I'm wondering if that was the name of the one that was a. Athena's mother, because Zeus tricked her into being small so she he could eat her. Oh, that might be. Uh, no, I think Mikros is just a word. Okay. Because um, I could have sworn it started with an M, but, you know. Yeah. And then there's the greatest Greek myth of all, in my opinion. It is the great snub. <laughs> Please tell us about this snub, because you've mentioned it at the beginning of the show yes. before we started recording. Well, see, one time there, there was this party that was going on. Uh, oh, so mm, 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 mm. well, more like liar and wine and grapes, and nectar and ambrosia. These were the Greek gods, after all. They were all mm. up on Mount Olympus. Except for they didn't invite them. Mm, that's some good sacrifice. Yep, they didn't. Except for they did, they were a bunch of bastards, as has been previously noted, and did not bother to invite everyone. And there was one very specific goddess they did not oh, invite. That's weird. And. Well, she got a bit cross about it, um, rightfully so, because they tended to leave her out of all of their festivities, and she just finally had it at this point, because they just didn't seem to like her very much, which is totally a, a wrong and um, totally, um, you know, it's it's like the popular kids not liking the nerds in high school, mm-hmm. you know. And it's because it's not because because they don't know them. They don't get to know them. They just say, "Oh, you're stupid." And don't get to know you. So, to that is of the great that itself is the great snub. But who's the goddess you didn't mention? Or are you getting to it? I'm getting to it. Okay. So don't rush the man. Sorry. So what she did was she decided to play a little prank. A little. A little prank. A little. Okay. And but by Greek god standards. And, hey, she wasn't the one who took it too far. So she took, she made a golden apple and wrote the word Kalisti on it, which means to the fairest, and rolled it into the party. <clears throat> and so three goddesses saw this apple. They were there, and Aphrodite looked at the apple and said, Oh, I am the most beautiful. Must be for me, because my beauty is the fairest of them all. And then Hera said, No, I am the fairest, for I am queen of the gods. The apple must be for me. And then Athena said, No, I am the fairest of, I am the fairest because I am the wisest and most competent in warfare of all of the, of all of the Greek gods and goddesses. The, The apple must belong to me. So, they, they, you know, started pulling each other's hair out. And so cat got, fight. got a little bit of a cat fight about this apple. Swing, ding, ding, ding. <sighs> That's as far as it should have gone. That's all Eris was looking for. But no. They oh, so had, that's the goddess, Eris. Eris. Okay. Eris, yes. Um, the, the, one of the greatest, in my opinion, of all the Greek gods and goddesses. 
She does not get the credit she deserves. She's only ever used as a scapegoat because the other Greek gods are much bastards and do not understand her. Um, she got a sub exoplanet named after. Yes, I know, which is awesome. <laughs> um, that's because scientists are cooler than Greek gods. <laughs> um, so you know the problem is is then these you know these two goddesses all cat are getting this cat fight about it and finally finally like you know Zeus. After he's had his fill of enjoyment of watching the th three of them cat fight about this, um, goes, hey, 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 stop it. You're going to have to find another way to settle this. So they go down and do what Greek gods do, and, and involve themselves with humans, cause humans problems. Hmm. And, you know, like, you know, Athena, you know, they, 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 you know, pick up this poor boy, Paris. <laughs> And they're like, okay, dude, you're going to have to pick which of us is the fairest. You know, poor Paris is like, huh? To, you know, three goddesses standing in front of him, you know, can't say no because they'll just blow him up and go find somebody else. But so he says yes, you know, and like, you know, you know, Athena's like, you know, I will give you the, you know, the most power in warfare. I will make you the greatest warrior ever. Yeah, pretty tempting offer to a strapping young Greek lad. Uh, you know, Hera offers whatever Hera offered. I can never remember. Vagina. No. Oh. No, that wasn't Hera. Um, Hera, you know, she's like, I will make you the wisest ruler or, you know, some, mm -hmm. some shit like some that. Some shit like that, you know. But whatever. Paris is a young man. Not, you know, being a kick-ass warrior that can never be defeated. Sounds pretty good. Great wise ruler. I, I'm, dude, I'm 20. I'm not going to be a ruler for a long time. You know, I'm trying to go kick some ass first, you know. But then Aphrodite comes up and he's like, I get you laid. <laughs> Being a strapping young lad of 20, which one does Paris pick? Getting laid. Like, I can always learn to be a warrior. I can always learn to be a warrior. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, I will get you laid by the most beautiful woman on earth. And Paris is like, okay. <laughs> which, you know, eventually leads to the, the, the Trojan War. But the moral of the story is, and I, I, I think that most of my geeky friends will agree that this is the true moral of the story. Be inclusive. Invite everybody to your parties. Or you might start some shit that you did not intend. Don't piss off the nerds. Don't piss off the nerds. Or chaos will ensue. Eris is the goddess of chaos. Mm -hmm. Now, is that the apple that she uses the uh, inspiration for your little logo? Yes. Mm. <clears throat> I was just curious. Yep. So, that, yeah, there, and um, it is also, of course, the reason that I can no longer eat hot dogs with hot dog buns on Fridays. One. Wow, okay, one what? <laughs> um, getting off of the Greek mythology, kind of. Um, there's a quote unquote religion. I believe it is actually officially recognized finally um called the Eresian uh okay there's a lot of names but the Eresian movement um the, based off of the book wrote in the uh 1950s and 60s or 1960s um called the Prince of Discordia um which where they took Eris and used stories and made up everything about her to make her and the religion around her basically a white man's version of Zen Buddhism. Um, and that includes not eating hot dogs on Friday with a bun? Right. But you could eat the bun separately if you wanted, or the hot dog separately. Yes. Or any other day of the week except for Friday. Of course, you're not actually, as an Eresian, required to follow any of the Eresian rules because that would just be restricting what you're doing, and you don't want to restrict your own chill. So... I generally, even on Fridays, eat my hot dogs with hot dog buns. <laughs> so, sounds a lot like a uh, dudism. Dudism is kind of inspired by um, the Eresian movement and also the Church of the Subgenius. So, I am a, I am a, uh, I could marry you under the dudism. Nice, if I wanted to. Cool. So, if you're ever looking for a. For a big Lebowski themed wedding, call me. <laughs> I'll be there. 
All right. Serving white Russians, but only if you're wearing your uh, slippers and robe. Ooh, white Russian flavored cake. That would be awesome. Fucking somebody make that happen. I <laughs> guess that it has. I'm pretty sure it has. They have boozy cake flavors are a big thing. Yeah. Well, I know they are, but yeah. I, I've never seen, I've never heard specifically a white Russian cake before, though. Yeah. I mean, Kahlua in a cake. Pretty awesome. Mm. Google. Yeah. What's the Google say? What's the Google say? Uh, actually, while well, he's looking at it, it was uh, Matisse. Matisse. Okay. Yeah, so Matisse and Zeus are effectively the parents of... There's white uh, Russian cupcakes that popped up. Nice. Oh, those well, could be converted. That uh, was the, yeah, the, the cupcake recipe. You know what the difference between a cupcake recipe and a cake recipe is? Bigger pan. Bigger. Yeah, a bigger pan. Mm-hmm. Um, Longer baking time. Yeah. Dude. White Russian cupcakes on Food Network. Four out of five stars. Not too shabby. Uh, no. Nope. D- d- eggs, cup, what's, where's the alcohol? Okay, you need Irish buttercream, vodka. Really, why would you bother putting the vodka in? Vodka, good vodka doesn't taste like anything. It's just going to cook out. <laughs> yeah. All right, you're still looking. Well, depending yeah. on what... I'm just reading the ingredients because I'm trying to figure out where the... Oh, here we go. One ounce of coffee liqueur recommended Kaluba. Depending okay. on what part of the process <clears throat> the booze hall goes in at, they could still be mildly alcoholic. And gold dust. True. Um, I've seen boozy cupcakes that are actually boozy. Yeah. I also saw a thing for um, I am totally wine jello. Those. I've seen wine jello before. Yeah, yeah. that looks pretty good. Um, and I've also seen schnapps jello. Oh, yeah. So See, you can the have kind of schnapps I like is peppermint schnapps. See, I don't like schnapps. I just in general. Peppermint schnapps in hot cocoa is the greatest thing ever to happen to Boise winters. Just Boise winters, not in the winters anywhere else. Well, I've never had them during the winter anywhere else. So oh, okay. No. I can't make that claim. Amazing. Okay. Right, would you want me to be dishonest? I don't want you to be dishonest. I was just checking if anywhere else but boys. Well, whatever, you're encouraging me to lie. I, I am not encouraging you to lie. Do not appreciate that. No means no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyway, someone else talked besides me. Well, yeah, I mean, we can go on on Greek mythology all night, but, you know, there's other mythologies out there. Yes. So, let's see. Uh, you got anything? You uh, looked like you were saying something. Well, no. If you uh-huh. wanted to touch on, which might but hurt some people, things like modern religious mythologies. Well, actually, the first thing that popped into my head. How about how about this? Let me take it to the obscure here. Okay, mm-hmm. I might have had. How a about story, myths but that's fine. generated by the internet, aka Slenderman? How about how about the story I was starting to tell before you changed the subject? But that's okay. Was well, that what you were going to go with? Yeah, but it's fine. Oh, well, you said modern religion, and that well, kind of what popped no, it I up. No, I was, I was, I was, I was talking about this. Never mind. It's fine. It's fine. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I love you, Nikki. I'm well, sorry. I was say, uh, well, but like Eresianism and uh, the Church of the Subgenus actually are both verifiable, technically, religions. Um, that have started within the last 60 or 70 years. So, mm-hmm. very, both of them very. Scientology? Not organized. Church of the Flying <laughs> Spaghetti Monster? Yeah, there's also Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, legally re- recognized religion. And the Pastafarians. I was um, <laughs> reading this article last night about how scientists think they figured out the actual scientific cause behind. The myth of the uh, the ten plagues okay. in the Bible. Yeah. So they think that a volcano erupted oh. in Greece, and that the ash got into the Nile River, which uh, helped promote the growth of those red algaes, which is why the water turned to blood, blood, which then killed the fish. So the frogs all fled the water, water. which was the plague of frogs, nice. because the fr- and then the frogs died because they were poisoned. Right. And because the frogs died, the bugs went crazy, which is the plague like of locusts. locusts. And there are a lot of biting flies that live in that area, right. which is all the boils and the dying cattle. And then the other theory is that because of the 
um, earth movements from the volcano that it released methane gas from underneath the Nile. Okay. Which it's heavier than air, so it would be kind of close to ground level. Right. And I guess during that time period, firstborn children slept on the ground. Right. Which explains why they're the ones that got taken overnight. Right. Which I thought was, it's because, you know, a lot of mythology, it does have roots and actual occurrences. Yeah. So I love when you read stuff like that. That's like, hey, we think we figured out where this story came from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, um, for, that's been basically verified for an incredibly long time that the story that comes down to us as the Noah, Noah's Ark in the Bible, um, one, there's stories that are essentially exactly the same that oh, every, predated every by culture. thousands of years. Um, but specifically, there was in the lower Tigris and Euphrates Valley, in other words, next to the coast, um, uh, 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 in that area, there was a flood that flooded the entire uh, Tigris and Euphrates Valley, the lower valley. Um, so that was they're they are fairly confident due to the 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 language chain um that that is where the myth of noah came <clears throat> from is that specific flooding because according to the people who lived there that was their entire world flooding mm-hmm. so yeah they're pretty sure that's where the myth of noah actually comes from so they're wasting their time with the satellites that are up there to look for noah's ark uh there was like some weird ass story like several years ago, like I'll say like ten years ago, where they said they found what they thought might be yeah, Noah's Ark off like they found a pile the coast of, of Florida or something or Maine or no, it was like in the Antarctic. I think they found it several times. Yeah, they they found they Noah's find Ark a few piles times. of wood in the shape of a boat, which after thousands of years it probably wouldn't be in the shape of the of a boat or piles of wood. Or that or that boat they so, found in like the mountain of Ireland yeah, or something like that that yeah. it's, it's like petrified. It's completely possible to find boats. Yeah. That's a thing. <laughs> um, I would say they, they find boats in Norway all the time. It's true. When I was there, they had just unearthed in a farmer's field a, a Viking ship, and it's this totally landlocked area. Yeah. Uh, and they had found on this cliff face next to his farm all these uh, runes and uh, Viking carvings and stuff like that. We got to go see it. It was super fucking rad. Yeah. Pictures of it. I'll show you sometime. You'll geek out about it. Yes. <laughs> so, so I was like, there's another good one to p- talk about for a minute. Norse God. mythology. Yay. 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 One of my favorites. So, yeah. Um, I like these guys. They pretty much only have two things on their mind. Eating and drinking. And, f- okay, fighting. So... I thought you were going to go with the other F. Yeah, and, there's and, two F words they really like. And, okay, and fuck. Okay, okay, they got four things on their mind. I but, was going to say fornicating, but that works too. Okay, whatever. I mean, it's what, fucking. It's fucking. It is, yeah. We don't go for safer work here. No. I just um, also really like that word. In let us earn that explicit tag. No, Mickey. but you don't get a lot of chances to use the word fornicating. That's true. And it is don't. kind of fun to say. Yeah. Just, just saying. <sighs> I'm going to throw that in a D&D game. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> as long as the fox acorn's there, I don't care. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, just... not like as part of that same storyline. Oh, I was thinking of just the, 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 the fox acorn's just there staring at you just, as like, you fornicate. walk in on a fox acorn orgy. <laughs> and they all stop and stare. <laughs> yeah, and they all stop and stare at us. Dude. And then you're like, you just like, sorry, Join walk in back. Or get out. <laughs> you could have knocked. <laughs> No Let's means no there. fox accords. Wait, they're yipping? No, they're it's, not. It's not, it's not it's, they're not furries. It is a mythical creature, <laughs> damn it. Uh, <laughs> going home. <laughs> Here's your ride. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Um, but yeah. Um, Norse. The Norse. Um, yeah, see, if there was any one destruction of the world I could get behind. It was the it was the Norse destruction of the world, you know, because like, you know, it's like you know, like a lot of mythologies talk about you know evil taking over some boring. No, the, the the Norse know how to write a destruction of the world myth. You ever read through Armageddon? That is some like hardcore metal shit right there. Oh yeah. You know, it's like, you know, There's like a reason so many metal bands come out of that country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, it's because their entire mythology started, their mythology started metal, basically, is what it boils down to. But, you know, like, you know, people coming out, coming back from the grave and, you know, whatever. Okay, cool. They were doing that in Norse mythology also. Awesome. Yeah. But in the Norse mythology, there are, everyone's like, all right, arm up, boys. And everyone's coming up swinging to take down the evil. They're not going without a fight. You know, like some mythologies, people just roll over and be like, oh, evil wins or whatever. No, the Norse aren't going down without a fight. They're going to fight until the bitter end, even though they know they lose. Like, I'm going to die with a boot in somebody's ass. That is right. <laughs> I've drinking from the Norwegian Fountain of Youth, by the way. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, never died. And tell Armageddon. Tell her. Yeah. It wasn't the Immortal <laughs> Fountain. Huh? See, it wasn't the Immortal Fountain. It was the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, but you That's have to start you, aging again sometime. It's the fountain of youth. I was saying, I'm kind of like I just realized that you had a box of crayons. <laughs> you are an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find my markers. <laughs> so you carry crayons as a backup. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, any awesome. self-respecting just, adult well, would. I just, out of nowhere, I just like, there's a box of crayons in front of Nikki right now. And it's missing the color red, which is really bothering me a lot. And Make some orange and brown. Like, I've got the white. Who the fuck uses the white crayon? That is good Racist. for construction. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the We're Totally Not Racist box of skin tones that Cray- Crayola has? Uh, yeah, we actually have our own version of that Work. Oh, do you really? Yes. It's actually a really handy box of crayons. I just love that they choose to illustrate it with children of all skin tones on yes. the front of it. See, um, we accept the fact that we've been racist for the majority of our existence. Here, have this box of browns. Like, <laughs> well, it's because all humans fall onto the brown spectrum. I know. Technically, I know I mean, they do. I don't. I'm a little too white. Yeah, I'm, I'm a slight shade of pink. Oh, this I is think. called apricot now. I think it used to be peach, didn't it? Yeah. It's flesh tone one? Why would you change the name from ap- peach to apricot? Whatever. They're both fruits. And neither one of them's really that color. No. It, they just didn't want to call it white person, is what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Crayons are really racist. <laughs> European. <laughs> Caucasian. <laughs> oh, crayons. Yes, I have crayons, and I'm using them to color my fox corn. Don't judge me. They're really fun to color with. I used to bring coloring books to classes when I was a college student. Coloring books? Yep. Mm-hmm. I didn't get good grades for some reason. Hmm. I don't know yeah, why. why. Yeah. Skip it- class, bringing coloring books? Yeah. Well, let's pause the show real quick. Nikki, what are you doing? What are you? Oh, I'm going what? back to school. Yay, for Yay. what? Hey, for graphic design. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Also, by the way, can I use our logo for my portfolio to get accepted into the art department? Yay. Yes. Yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to apply now. What? I have to like I have to give them a portfolio of my work and write up fucking artist statements, which I've always hated doing. Artist statements just Oh, suck. you looked at me it's when you said just... that. I was like, I have to apply. For no, what? you thought that when I told you last time. <laughs> I too. know, but you looked right at me, right? When you because said Because you were sitting where I'm looking. And also you're the other artist in the room, so she's probably looking for a bit of sympathy from yeah, you. Yeah, because oh. I think it's bullshit because I mean, yeah, I didn't get good grades, oh, but I was bullshit. already a, I, I was already majoring in graphic design. And they want like uh, they want like all these different mediums and shit. And I, yeah, like I'm not worried about the graphic design end of my portfolio. I've got a pretty decent portfolio built up in the last year, but but they want all the other stupid yeah, all the other stupid shit that I'm not going to be doing. But you some for some reason have to know how to do to kind of like math. I have to retake math. Um, oh, math 124 yeah. is not. Oh, I'm going to take 025 to start with because I failed 124 last time I tried to take it, and that was okay. seven years ago. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it wouldn't work out this time around. But yeah, Nikki's going back to school. So, Yay. Yay. full time work, full time school. What? What? What schedule? Sleep? I have caffeine. Thank and you very a podcast? Much. Yep. And uh, hopefully some modicum of life. Probably not, though. We're be, like, doing homework while we're doing the podcast. I'm <laughs> planning on doing it on my lunch at work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Jen does. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Norse Gods. Yeah. 
Norse gods. So, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Somebody else talk, please. I don't um, want to run the whole show. <laughs> yeah, I'm most knowledgeable, though. Um, you really are. Like, I know stuff, but <laughs> I don't know stuff in a forming thoughts kind of. Name a few of these Norse gods. Thor, Seif, Frey, Freyr, Freya, Odin, also, Wot- or, or also called Wotan, which is where we get the name Wotan's Day, which became Wednesday. It's true, it's true, I knew that one. Thor's Day, Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we got a lot of Saturday, Surtur's Day, which is one of the fire giants. Um, I hell. I that was off of Saturn. It could be. Hmm. It's I don't know. Either. I've heard, I've so heard Surtur's Day more than Saturn's Day. Okay. So. It could just be, hey, these words are similar. Let's name a day after them. Yeah. Make twice as many people happy. Yep. You tell those people it's named after those gods, and those people it's named after their gods, and then don't tell either one of them who it is, really. Like, so, yeah. But yes, um, let's see. Loki. Say, so, of course, Thor and Loki are probably the two most famous right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Marvel you can movies. Walk over to Trish's cubicle, and there's calendars and posters and action figures right now. <laughs> All of Tom Middleton. Hi, Trish. I think she listens. Actually, she's more into Chris Hemsworth. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, she she likes Thor. She likes Thor. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's actually her symbol for telling if reports go to her is Thor's hammer. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mine's Mario. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're surprised. Nobody raises their hand. <laughs> yeah, not totally not surprised on that one, Dustin. It, well, <laughs> it was handpicked for me. Yeah, I would have been surprised if you were surprised. <laughs> <laughs> You're surprised when it surprised me. Surpriseception. What? <laughs> what? A surprise within a surprise within a surprise. <laughs> a chalupa. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the, what is it, Chirito? I think is what it is. It's like a ch- chalupa that's got beans wrapped, smothered around the outside, and then it's wrapped in a tortilla or some shit like that. I don't, I think it's a Chirito. It's something ridiculous along those lines that they've got at like Taco Bell or some shit now. I'm I've given like, oh. up on Taco Bell. Oh, a long I would say time Taco Bell. Uh, I went new, to Taco the, Time last week. And the it's newest, better than I remembered. The newest screwball thing I saw from Taco Bell was the um, fucking waffle taco. No, oh, Jesus, that made me want to bash my head against. Yeah, the me wall. too. Um, no, it was a burrito wrapped in a quesadilla. Quesarito. That's Quesarito, what I was thinking. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, it's a burrito. I just remember it was Mexican food wrapped around Mexican food. That's all I yeah. remembered about it. Yeah. Oh, no. I love Mexican food. Actually, the the crisp burritos from Taco Time are crack. They are. Yeah. And they're cheap. We went there, and I spent so much money that they were like, here, have some of these cinnamon sugar chip things. I was like, okay. That's how you know you spent too much at Taco Time when they yeah. start offering you those. Well, I was like, ooh, I want food for now and probably lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so much food. Yeah. So, yeah. This is making me hungry. So, anyway, some. You, other you mythologies. Were, other mythologies. Modern mythology. Yes. Yes. You, such, you, as you, such as. Such as. Yes. Okay. So, in case you haven't heard nice of. Nice segue, rant, Mr. Wednesday. American Gods, yay. Yeah. Yay. Um, <laughs> Speaking of that, how are you doing on that book, Nikki? Um, I haven't had a chance to read it this week, but I'm still mostly done with it. Okay. How's your book coming? Oh. Have you cracked it? That. How's having a toddler and a job and a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you wanted to, you could just buy us coffee. That'd be okay. What? <laughs> You'd rather actually lose. <laughs> yeah, let me lose first. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> I want to lose okay. with I want to lose with dignity versus just giving in. Okay. Okay. You realize we'll get to make more fun of you this way. Uh, I, well, okay. but yes. Um, okay. Just check. Modern mythologies. Neil Gaiman. Yes. Neil Gaiman. Um, if you haven't heard uh, us rant about what an amazing human he is, probably the best modern living author. Period. Yeah. Um, y- he's amazing, and he uses not only like all of the mythologies. In his books, but he blends up, them expertly. Yeah, blends them expertly. Stays, I think, fairly true to what the original character of the gods would have yes. been envisioned by the people that worshipped them, uh, like Lady Bast. Yes, in Sandman, she's my favorite, of course. Lady Bast was awesome in Sandman. She's a kitty. Um, 
But well, she, thing, she actually acts like a human yeah, cat hybrid. In she the does. Comics. She acts exactly how a human cat hybrid would act. Yeah, I love it. Um, and he he does that. Like he makes the the nor. I, remember, I don't remember. Was it Odin? Yeah. Yeah. He makes him a drunk, ragey, short, douchey yeah. person, which is just freaking hilarious and fairly accurate to probably yeah. how he would have been. It's, it's great. But then he also adds in his own mythology. Like with the endless, the seven, the yeah. endless, and makes that somehow more captivating, I think, than the characters that have been around for thousands of yeah. years. Well, the, like to me, the endless, like what what some of the, one of the things I find so absolutely fascinating about the endless is that they are literally vast cosmic powers. Mm-hmm. They are... Itty bitty leaving space. Yeah. Itty bitty leaving space. Oh, for a while, Sandman had an itty bitty leaving space. It's but <laughs> That's why I said that. Um, but they they are their essence, yet their essence happens without them, as destruction proved when he quit. They're the embodiment. I think They're the embodiment it. of it. Yeah, but and, and they are... It exists without them, but they can't exist without it. But also none of their... None of the things they embody are ever going away. Yeah, change maybe, like in the like in delight becoming delirium. Mm-hmm. But which, let's face it, happened in the 1960s as way better human. as delirium. Yes, um, but like they're this weird, and they're also phenomenally powerful. Like just, but they're siblings, and they act like it. Yeah, I love that. And also, they're only phenomenally powerful within their own domain. Mm-hmm. Of course, granted, some of them get a cheat on that, like death, because everything dies. Um, uh, she put it one time. Um, she she was the last one out, and she locks the door to the universe on her on her way out, mm-hmm. and turns off the light, and turns off the light. It turns off the light to the universe and locks her but door. But then, on the like, way out. she'll randomly meet with Dream, and they'll feed pigeons. Yes, because <laughs> you know that's what brothers you and sisters do. Have you? Hmm? You haven't read those yet, have you? Hmm. Sandman and the Death. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm bringing you one tomorrow. No, he has to try to finish American Gods. First. Finish American Gods so you can read Sandman. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to start like whapping you upside the head with a book every morning until you finish that so that you can read the other ones. Do you want to borrow my copy of American Gods? So hit him with a copy. I was thinking Under the Dome. Because that's what I'm reading. It's another book I actually want to read. It's... If you're having problems getting through American Gods, I know. I Under the Dome I, is like 18 of that. <laughs> I had picked up Under the Dome on the way out of Hawaii to have something to read on the plane, mm. and I read about 10, 15 pages of it on the plane, and then for some reason I just couldn't. It's Stephen King. I, I re- it's slow starting. Well, I read through the intro, like the yeah. the prologue, or it gets really prologue? fucked up. Prelogue, pre pre prologue. preface, preface. Yes, okay. and uh, and uh, it basically. They people are flying and they go whap. All the crashy things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even that I don't think was as interesting as when he really gets into the mental what have you. You know, that's something to tie in. Some of his stuff is sort of, has sort of become modern mythology, like Pennywise the Clown. Yes. Uh, 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 what about the Boogeyman? Boogeyman is definitely modern. Well, the boogeyman. Well, it's been around for a long time. The boogeyman's been around for a long time. The, well, the we've always been. Well, afraid we've of dark. always had a boogeyman. Humans whatever have we always call been it. afraid of the dark because bad things that want to eat us are in the dark. It's yes. just as we've gotten modern, those things aren't really real so much as our instincts. So we make up things like the boogeyman yeah. and Slenderman and, and Slenderman. Yeah, which is terrifying. Chupacabra. Oh God, the scariest. La chupacabra. The scariest <laughs> internet myth I've ever read is the one about the grinning lady. I haven't seen this one. Oh my god! Okay, somebody give me their phone because mine's dead. Um, it's so it's this. Oh, I I don't even want to say it. I just want to read it. Like I need to turn up my collar because it's that creepy. Okay. <laughs> I don't need you to see the hair sticking up on the oh, back no, of my neck. I don't want anything to bite the back of my neck. Okay. Um. <laughs> Mary. Okay. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary has say, been around say for her name, okay. say her name three times. Who actually stood in the bathroom during a sleepover and did that? Yeah, I did too. All of us you have life. to do it at least once. Yeah. Uh, no, I was in my 20s by the pr- first time I heard about that, and I was like, eh, whatever. Really? Really? Yeah. In your 20s? 
I, See, that one's been around never since. I've heard of that one. I would I'd say, say late elementary school. I, yeah. Fourth or fifth grade. That's when I first yeah. heard it, probably. About I, just, time. I remember seeing it in some movie somewhere. Oh. Okay. Well, re- well, most recently it was in uh, uh, one of the paranormal movies, paranormal oh. activity movies. And little girls are like, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Okay, and they go, boof, ah, and they run off out of the room, and they shut the lights off, and then, poof, you know, the image of a girl shows up in the mirror. Yeah. I found the story. It's actually called The Expressionless, and it was written. Oh, I have read this. Yeah. yeah it's creepy. Okay, can I read it? Yeah, it's go ahead. Like, it's, it's not that super long. Okay. In June of 1972, a woman appeared in Cedar sinai Hospital wearing nothing but a white gown covered in blood. This is one of those ones that shows up in Snopes. Mm-hmm. But it's... Now, uh, don't stop interrupting. It's scary. You're going to ruin the mood. Go, go ahead. It's, okay. It is creepy. Just reading it, it's kind of like, good. Now, this in itself should not be too surprising as people have often ac- often have accidents nearby and come to the nearest hospital for medical attention. Narf. Th- oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm... I'm sorry. I'm trying to scare people. Read. Go ahead. <laughs> but there were two things that caused people who saw her to vomit and flee in terror. The first being that she wasn't exactly human. She resembled something close to a mannequin, but had the dexterity and fluidity of a normal human being. Her face was as flawless as a mannequin's, devoid of eyebrows, and smeared in makeup. That's the other reason people were throwing up or fleeing in terror. She had what looked like m- might have been... A kitten clenched in between her teeth. Her jaws clamped so unnaturally tightly around it to the point where no teeth could be seen. The blood was squirting out all over her gown and onto the floor. She then pulled it out of her mouth, tossed it aside, and collapsed. From the moment she stepped through the entrance to when she was taken to a hospital room and cleaned up before being prepped for sedation, she was completely calm, expressionless, and motionless. The doctors had thought it best to restrain her until the authorities could arrive, and she did not protest. They were unable to get any kind of response from her, and most staff members felt too uncomfortable to look directly at her for more than a few seconds. But the second the staff tried to sedate her, she fought back with extreme force. Two members of the staff holding her down as her body rose up on the bed with that same blank expression. This is bad grammar. Uh, She turned her emotionless eyes towards the male doctor and did something unusual. She smiled. As she did, the female doctor screamed and let go out out of shock. In the woman's mouth were not human teeth, but long, sharp spikes, too long for her mouth to close fully without causing any damage. The male doctor stared back at her for a moment before asking, What in the hell are you? She cracked her neck down to her shoulder to observe him, still smiling. There was a long pause. The security had been alerted and could be heard coming down the hallway. As he heard them, she darted forward, sinking her teeth into the front of his throat, ripping out his jugular and letting him fall to the floor, gasping for air as he choked on his own blood. She leaned up, or she stood up, leaned over him, her face coming dangerously close to his as the life faded from his eyes. She leaned closer and whispered in his ear, I am God. The doctor's eyes filled with fear as he watched her calmly walk away to greet the security men. His last ever sight would be watching her feast on them one by one. The female doctor who survived the incident named her the Expressionless. There was never a sighting of her again. (laughs) Super spooky. It was for like a... a a short story, horror story contest, but a lot of people think that it's like an actual supernatural thing and you'll see it posted on sites that don't check their facts. Oh, yeah. Bigfoot. Oh, Bigfoot's a There's good one. one. Oh, that story creeps me out, though. And There's a super creepy picture up <clears> on top of it. It's like, like one of those pictures that you'd posted. see in those uh, the scary story books you used to read in elementary school. Oh, I totally bought one of those at a yard sale because I love the shit out of those stories. Which well, I heard they were supposed to make like a like, like a ones? TV series out of yeah, it. Yeah, but I don't think they're going to let them be as scary as they were. No. Like, the one that creeped me out the most of it as a kid was the one where the spider lays yeah. eggs in the girl's cheek. That's the most that's the most memorable one for me for most yeah, reasons. Because the illustration is traumatic. They should not have had those in children's libraries. Like, my mom would take them away from me before dinner because if I read them after dinner, I would have nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Uh, expressionless. We should post a link to that. that people could Just putting this out there, but the T-Fury shirt for the day is uh, um, it's like a crossover between Doctor Who and Where the Wild Things Are. Mm. Where the Wild Who is? You need to stop telling me about these. Yeah. Um, I was saying, also with modern mythology... Um, it's kind of interesting to see some of the things that have changed, like in comic books, but even in more general 
like superhero comic books because Sandman, while produced by DC, is not a superhero comic book. No. I think the closest he gets to having a superhero show up is Constantine shows up once. Again, not a superhero. <laughs> and um, he's smoking. And he smokes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a little jab at a certain TV network and inaccuracies. Wink, wink. Um, oh, there's no winking. This is a full-on headbutt to the nose. Yeah. <laughs> um, but comic books, in a lot of ways, especially for America, are kind of a modern version of our own mythology. Mm-hmm. Because, it, you know... We retell them over we and over. Re- yeah, we retell the stories over and over. Get irritated when people get it wrong. Yeah, but like, also, it, they, they, have, they have changed to keep up with society the way mythology used to. But it happens more rapidly now because mm-hmm. of how rapidly we can disseminate information. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that they're finally giving Storm her own comic? Awesome. Yeah, I was pretty excited about that. I think I'm going to have to. I haven't, I haven't purchased a, a serial comic in yeah. ages. Like, I usually wait until the whole thing's done and then I buy the trade paperbacks, but yeah. I think I might actually follow this one because it, yeah. pre- it, it looks like it's um, 90s Storm, like Mohawky Storm. Awesome. Yeah. Leather jacket and everything. Leather jacket, leather pants, yep. mohawk, badass bitch. The cool fucking storm that deserves her own comic book, and I can't believe she's just now getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the only one I want to pick up right now is the new Sandman. I know. I'm waiting until he's done with it. because <laughs> I don't want to wait till he's done, but the problem is I also know that I should wait till he's done because yeah. I will become well, so... Antsy between issues. Mm-hmm. I am not patient enough to wait a month to find out what happens for things. I'm oh, bad enough waiting a week. he's not actually sticking to a schedule. No, he's I know. Just him when and that's done. what I was gonna say. I'm like bad enough when I wait for a week, but I read that he's not sticking with a schedule with it. And also, all my other Sandman's, I've got the collected yeah. books, so I'm a little OCD when it comes to my comics. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep with that. But the only trade paperback I can think of that I have is Gen thirteen. Yeah, but if, but if you look at the well, way comics, but if you look at how comics go, like, um, like a, a very good example of this is a very classic one, Batman. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, that, yeah. if you look at Batman back in the day of Detective Comics number whatever it was when he showed up, because it wasn't number one, um. Um, he was basically a detective and they were serialized detective novels, which was very much the entertainment of that day and age. And he became popular and he reflected the time of whatever his, the writing of the comics and whatever else was going on with Batman, because Batman has had a long history of being in TV and movies, always reflected the time he was in. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously during World War II, comics huge, were a huge propaganda tool for the United States. Oh yeah, Captain America. Captain America. Yeah. Um, you know, it, even more older heroes than Captain America that were already established, mm-hmm. like Batman. But I mean, he came into existence because of it, yeah. because of World War Two. So did uh, Nick Fury and the Agents of Shield. I'm very into detective, detective comics era, Batman, like yeah. just the whole '40s mystery novels. Yeah, because I got all those pulp. Novels that my dad gave me that were like oh, right. romance from like the forties up and up through the late sixties, and they're just amazing. And it makes me want to go back and reread the old Batman detective stories. Right, but yeah, he like during the sixties, Batman was even in the comics was the Adam West Batman essentially. <laughs> um, he was very you know happy go lucky Batman. Because America was on this high tide, and... Nobody wants to read Debbie Downer. Yeah, nobody wanted to have a Debbie Downer around, basically. Did he have the same origin story, though? Like, where Yeah, he, his origin story never changed. It was always that his parents were killed. And he was just super stoked about it. He was just... <laughs> he, he didn't let it bother him, I guess. Is Why would you let it. that get you down, man? You're rich. That's, that shit happens, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, it's just shit. Yeah. But no, I mean, it wasn't like a hippie thing. It was, 
it was he was for mainstream America at the time. It was Marvel that always went out on a limb and went for the outsider mythologies, which I can get to in a second. And then as America changes, becomes more cynical, Batman does the same thing. You know, he, like, Batman is a good litmus test for America in a lot of ways. Um, if you read Batman. The more depressing Batman is, the more fucked we are, you guys. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the more angst. My parents are dead. The more angst ridden Batman is, um, the more cynical America has gotten. Um, and he has waxed and waned in his cynical. Uh, Bruce Wayne? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he has waxed and Bruce Wayne. Yay. Um, I love it. Yeah. Over, over the decades between a campy hero and a serious hero. And the more time more closer he gets to serious, the more cynical America is at that time. But then you also have like Marvel who creates the myths as they're needed. X-Men. For example, the X-Men. Um, for the people who don't know, the X Men was written at the hi- was started at the height of the civil rights movement. They are all about acceptance of the outsider and those who are different, and not s- s- um you know segregating or subjugating those who are different. I, in particular, am a huge X Men fan, and I think that might have a very large bit to do with yeah. that. Yeah, that's. Yeah. The mainstream comic that I always yeah. liked in every way, shape, and form. Like, X-Men movies, they can make them as shitty as they want. I will still love the fuck out of them because they're X-Men movies. Like, it's... See, so far the only one I haven't liked was number three. I didn't mind any of the actual X-Men movies. Wolverine number two is the only one I've... Wolverine two? The yeah. Silver Samurai one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the only one I haven't really been a fan There's of. There's X-Men Origins Wolverine and then the I was the X-Men Wolverine. Origins Wolverine yeah. was the one I hated. Well, it's... I see. Oh, I like that because it had it Gambit, had Gambit in, it. in it. Yeah, it oh. was shitty Gambit, but it was still Gambit. I'll take what I can get, thank you. But, but look what they as did long to as long Deadpool. As fucking Channing Tatum. What? <laughs> Sorry. But look what they did to Deadpool in that movie. See, and here's, here's my thing, is the characters they tend to fuck up are the ones I'm the least familiar with. I knew they fucked up Deadpool. That was fairly obvious, but because they took away his ability to talk to start well, with, well, and his costume yeah. was just burn scars. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it. I'm not all that emotionally attached to Deadpool. Yeah. Well, that's, that's like my thing with Deadpool. I'm not emotionally attached. I don't really care about the character yeah. so much. As he's funny, and I love that he's, he knows he's, he's funny and irreverent. He knows he's in a comic. That's yeah. great, and I'm kind of bummed that they didn't play with that more. But it it was to me kind of he was such a minor part in the movie, as far as me because of the two characters I was there to see were Gambit and Wolverine. Well, see, to me, um, I barely remember Gambit even existed in the movie because I don't give a damn about Gambit. Well, Being a maybe, long shot ripoff. Maybe you should because he's awesome. Or he's just a long shot ripoff. You're a long shot ripoff. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of luck. <laughs> Which is part of his power. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Superheroes are very similar, I think, to the old Greek gods. How they've got yeah, they powers, are. and there's fewer of them than there are of us. And yeah, but then that's part. I mean, that's part of like you why have they've... the certain ones that you worship, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Sandman, Morpheus. <laughs> the original Sandman, not Daniel. Thank you. Not stupid albino would, douche. Yeah. Would you throw the Matrix into a modern mythology? Um, I think it's no. sort of become one, though, because we're constantly... So everybody's like, we're all part of the Matrix, man. It, it's like, constantly getting re- referred to. Yeah. I don't know, because... came out, yeah, but it's, I think it's Pop diminished. culture and mythology, I think, yeah. are kind of... Mm. There's such a thin line. Yeah. Because mythology used to be pop culture. Yeah. You know, all the s- stories and songs and art. And now it's kind of gone the other way around where our pop culture becomes our mythology. Yeah. But, Man. like, I would say with, with The Matrix, um, I think aspects I, of it have. Aspects of it have, but they also tried too hard to make it a mythology by making it a Jesus allegory. Mm-hmm. Well, I so mean, Chronicles of Narnia isn't exactly 
Do you know? It's a it's not a blatant like Jesus allegory. Okay, when I first started reading it, though, I did not get that. Well, neither did I when I was yeah, seven. Yeah, so seven-year-old Nikki's brain is the filter I interpret that through because I loved it so much. I'm like, I want a friend who's a lion that talks. Like, well, yeah. So I watch it His now. His mouth moves like this. <laughs> well, in the books, you don't see that I shit. Yeah. Stuff. But, the, but the, like, the PBS... Oh, that like was awful. Funded. I was one thing about the Chronicle of Narnia movies, the new ones that have come out over the last few years or back in the last few years. Their CG was awesome. Yeah, it was. That's part of why I, I dig them. But I really wanted them to do a horse and his boy, though. That was my favorite. But they like the first movie. They weren't too bad with it, but the second movie, like they brought out the Jesus is great. Um like, baseball bat and started hitting you over the head with it. But then they also had Regina Spector make a beautiful song for it. I like Regina Spector. I, soundtracks, like, I like soundtracks, I don't like soundtracks. It's like, you know, I don't know. Sound, to me, my, I have a love-hate relationship with soundtracks because See? I generally I generally tend to like sound, movie soundtracks that are not specifically built for the movie, but they find songs that work within the movie. I think, the, I think the last soundtrack like, that I... Queen of the Damned. Um, oh, Queen of the Damned was badass. That was really good. I think um, that was actually probably the last re- soundtrack I ever bought. Last one I ever bought was Repo the Genetic Opera, uh, like, yeah, two but that's fucking a musical. weeks ago. Well, and the last one before that was Moulin Rouge. I only tend to buy musical soundtracks, I've noticed. Moulin or, or like, um, um, Lord well, of the Rings. that's because that's the only place you're ever going to hear that music, is on the soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Lord of the Rings, I've bought those soundtracks, too, because there's some gorgeous instrumental stuff yeah. on those. Yeah. Um, or like I, you know, I'll purchase individual songs off of um, off of sh- movies, like uh, uh, the one from The Hobbit, at in the end credits. Okay. Uh, it's a really gorgeous. Song. Oh yeah, it's I fall asleep a, long before. Cheering. Yeah, I don't like his other stuff. I Neither. listen to it, but that song is just—it's yeah. gorgeous and haunting, and yeah, it's great. Yeah, um, I was like, I fell asleep in The Hobbit before the end credits. So I mean, it's a it's it's a movie about. Walking a lot. I know that's why it didn't need to happen, yeah. and they could have sped that up and made less movies. But it's got Watson in it. Really? The last CD <laughs> I ever so bought was uh, Tron Legacy soundtrack. But oh, you know, that's a good one. Yeah. Daft Punk. So yeah, yeah. I, was I it, actually want that one. I was it okay? That mm-hmm. da- da- Daft Punk would be an exception there. Um, with the Tron Legacy soundtrack. Mm-hmm. That's because it's basically a Daft Punk album. It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. Because it worked for that. Yeah. Weird. I remember I bought the City of Angels soundtrack a long time ago. Oh too. my god, I totally Terrible have Terrible movie, that. good soundtrack. Uh-huh. I totally have that. I Iris have was my mind. fucking jam. What? Iris was my fucking jam. Iris is a good song, but there was one by... Uh, 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 God, that had good music on it. Oh, I gotta look it up now. I can't remember the, his name. As for the Crow soundtracks, I was like, Crow, there's another comic that mm. then kept becoming modern mythology. You know, I actually had the soundtrack to the third one. I never saw it, but I bought the soundtrack because of certain songs that were on it. Yeah, that were really. I was good. Like, my my favorite soundtrack for the Crow is still the first one. But this one that's got a mm. cover of "While well, My Guitar Gently Weeps." That's like super gothy emo sounding. Is it really goth good. sounding or emo sounding? There's a difference, and it's an well, important it's difference. Well, it's just angsty. It's been a while since I've listened to it. It's just generally <laughs> angsty is what I remember about it. <laughs> Ex goth, not emo remotely. The um, craft. That was another really good fucking soundtrack. Yes. Um, I didn't oh know God, the craft I watched soundtrack. that movie so many times. We decided we were going to be Wiccans, and we didn't know what that meant. <laughs> yeah, that movie. <gasps> Hello. Hey, buddy. How's Facebook? <laughs> We're, doing, we're trying to do a podcast here. Yeah, you still got turned on. Very unprofessional. Yeah, I don't know, but okay. um, that was the that was my favorite soundtrack for the crow for the crow movies was the original one, mm-hmm. but that's because of well the cure, uh, yeah, burn, yeah. So oh, Peter Gabriel, I believe, I grieve. That oh, was a good song. Oh, Peter yeah, Gabriel was, was awesome. Yeah. I uh I have two soundtracks to Moulin Rouge. They came out with two of them. Right. Because it's like Repo where there's so many fucking songs. They don't have a lot of options as far yeah. as fitting them all onto one C D. Yes, kids, that's a thing that people used to buy and some of us still do. I don't. Personally. I bought Repo on iTunes. That's the most money I've spent on music in probably 
five years. <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I um, I I just can't see buying a CD anymore. When all I'm gonna do with the CD. Jesus, dude. I'm sorry. You gotta warn people before you do that. I knew I was gonna be that loud. I apologize. Nobody and why? Who dolls that loud in their ears? Because she brought up Iris earlier. Uh, I hate myself for having done that. <laughs> I liked that song in sixth grade. And then. And then the nineties stopped. Ended. Yeah, exactly. The nineties never ended for me as I sit here in my flannel and my neon shirt. That's true. Yeah. <clears throat> my bad. I'm sorry. I love. Flannel, the only as a lesbian child of the '90s can possibly love flannel. Like it is a deep. I wore a lot of flannel, of flannel. In, in junior high. Have you seen me without a plaid shirt on ever? Probably, but maybe during like lunch workouts because who's going to do that? But I a dedicated child, lesbian child of the '90s. It's not even intentional. I just like them. <laughs> like I have a lot of them, and I like layers because. I'm uncomfortable with my body. <laughs> is so there, is layers. There, is there any lesbian myths? Oh, there's a ton of them. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, which one's the dude? Um, if that was a thing, we wouldn't be gay. <laughs> 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 or she had a traumatic event in her past, and that's why she's like that. No, no, pretty much just don't like dudes. I never had traumatic events in my past. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's myths, but they're you know social. Yeah, they're 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 myths. totally bad social. Yeah. yeah, it's like with pit bulls and their locking jaws. Yeah, people will just decide things are true. I totally got to use your that makes no evolutionary sense argument the other day. By the way, and it was ridiculously satisfying. Good, good. <laughs> oh, that Galunker Kickstarter I mentioned on a past news yes. show for that book. They hit not only did they hit their goal, which I think was like twenty. 27,000 Canadian dollars okay. or something like that, they're almost at 55,000 Canadian dollars. Nice. So this book that no publishing company would possibly touch has hit a goal where now they're trying to get it in every children's library. Nice. And I was actually able to, because we got paid, contribute to the Kickstarter. Uh, it was basically 27 bucks, um, 29 Canadian dollars for some reason. Uh, and it means I get a signed copy of it. Awesome. And because they've hit all these other levels of fundraising, I get bumper stickers and greeting cards. Oh, yeah. With yeah, yeah. arts on them. Yeah, so if anybody has extra money laying around and wants to go donate to a charity type thing promoting people not being dumbasses and believing myths about pit bulls, you know, that'd be good. <laughs> Those are myths that bother me is the ones where people are just ignorant. Yeah. Like the v- vaccination... Yeah. Assholes. So speaking of myths, anti-vaxxers um, <laughs> got their myths shot out from under them in the state of New York. Thankfully, because science, bitches. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Okay. I went all pinkman on their asses. Oh, I finished it. Breaking Bad. Oh. Um. Sad. Yeah, but like, I mean, there's, 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 you know, there's another thing about like myths. And like the like the anti vaxxers let me explain y'all what autism is. <laughs> it's called the property for <clears throat> autism is trisomy twenty one, which means you have a third chromosome attached to your twenty first allele. That means instead of an X, it's an X with a line through it instead of because our, our alleles look like our allele pairs, aka chromosome pairs look like X's right except for boys who also have one that is a Y instead of an X actually it's still technically an X just one of the things is dealies really, fell off one of the dealies is really stubby um that's what she said oh hey, so trisomy 21 means that you have a third chromosome in Nipple. the 21st allele that was close a vaccine cannot cause that that is a genetic mutation but Mason, scientific studies have shown that it can't <laughs> fucking happen. I can't even. I can't even jokingly be an anti-vaxxer. It just. It's painful. It, 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 yeah. I a vaccination. Brain cells joking. A vaccination about it. cannot cause this because there is not anything in any vaccine that causes genetic mutations. 
Now, and if you're wondering you cannot, if the government's putting tracking devices in your arms this way... Oh, God, you looked like you were going to punch me. I was totally joking. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I think you just physically hurt I him by broke saying that. Mason, <laughs> buddy, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know I don't really think these things. Uh, I know. It's just it hurt right, really it bad right there. It hurts yeah. Um, but, right in the yeah. science feels. It hurt you in yeah. your brain place. Yeah. And I pride my brain place on being large. Um, Ooh, that's what she said. Yep. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, the, the 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 cause of autism is an extra set of genetic instructions. A vaccine cannot give you an extra set of genetic instructions, especially in every cell of your body. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, so the anti-vaxxer myth needs to go away. That is a modern myth that doesn't need to continue. It should be illegal. I saw this great post earlier that said, okay. it's illegal for my child to take a peanut to school just in case someone might be allergic to them, but it's not illegal for anti-vaxxers kids to bring mumps, measles, yeah. all these other things to school. <laughs> um, yeah. And, well, there was a little bit of a, you know, measles outbreak over the last year. Mm-hmm. All due to anti-vaxxers. It's not a little bit. Have you seen those maps? Yes, I have. Um, I was trying to be understatingly sarcastic there. Um, but yeah, it's 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 the anti vaxxers fault that measles is coming back. We had it basically eradicated, at least from the first world. And there are certain people out there. Herd immunity. Jenny McCarthy. No. No. He's talking about people that can't get vaccinated. I'm talking about people who cannot get vaccinated oh. because... It they will... depend on the rest of us to not be jackasses yeah. to not die. Yeah. They basically... Our herd immunity uh, by being vaccinated protects these people because they cannot have a vaccination because it will kill them. Anti-vaxxers put these people at risk. Now... There is a certain amount of evolutionary argument that can be made that says these people should have died off anyway. Oh, harsh. Uh, it's true, though. You can say that about anti-vaxxers, too, though. But I can also say that about anti-vaxxers, <laughs> because evolutionary, they're dumb. Um, but the problem is I can't blame the children of the anti-vaxxers who are actually the ones getting hurt, because most of the anti-vaxxers had parents who vaccinated them because it was the law or everyone just did it back then. It's so, like the guy I saw riding his motorcycle on the freeway shirtless without a helmet on. You know, he should be if removed that guy from the dies, pool. it's probably for the best for the future of humanity. Yeah. Because that's stupid. Yeah. But, yeah. So, yeah. Anti-vaxxers. There's a myth that needs to go away. It won't, though, because there's still going to be people who ignore the scientific studies. Just like right. It's just like with pit bulls. It doesn't matter how many studies you have out there with actual evidence. People are going to just read the headline on some jackass's blog post and take that as fact over actual studies because yeah. it's easier than being informed. Yeah. And, and changing your opinion based on facts. Yeah. And, you know, that, that, of course, see, I, I know that's one of the beautiful things about science is it's right whether you believe it or not. Yep. Thanks, Neil. Yep. That doesn't stop millions of pit bulls from getting killed every year, but that's okay. No, unfortunately. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Those are some myths that really anger me, is the ones that affect the lives of other animals. Yeah. Like, it's... All animals have an equal right to be here. It We're just jackasses. Except for maybe chimps. Chimps are assholes. Yeah. I'm just kidding. You stick blades of grass in there. Who now dress themselves up with blades of grass. They're all fancy. Yeah. I think mosquitoes and and are actually the one animal that I would argue we could probably do without. Yeah. Because bats eat other things. Yeah. Most creatures who eat mosquitoes don't survive solely off mosquitoes. mosquitoes. They'll eat any bug. Yeah. Maybe bats just like a challenge. Maybe mosquitoes are douchebags and <laughs> should just be gone. So hey, right. buddy, I'm going to eat you and give you diseases. Don't. Thanks, mosquitoes. Do you but, think someday after all the humans kill themselves off and the chimpanzees take over, they'll have myths about us? Probably. Probably. That'd be awesome. Well, there's plenty of monuments sitting around yeah. that I'm sure that they would... <laughs> they would, yeah. They would have to... They Re- would recognize there was a species there before. Plus, remember there was a chimps statue. do really kind of already know of our existence. It's mm-hmm. not like we hide from them or they hide from us. Oh, yeah. 
Remember, so, there is the Statue the of Liberty on the, a beach. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just thinking more in terms of by the time they were intelligent enough to pass on these stories and memories and have right. a written language and all that, well, yeah, we'd probably be long gone. If it ever happens, there's... If it happens, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of mutation that is required to get from them to us, which is why we're different than them. So... And good chances that anything that kills us off is going to kill them, too. There is also a very good possibility of that, yes. Because them, orangs, and gorillas are really, really close. And the bonobo are really close to being people, so... Don't worry about the planet Earth not... You know, carrying on and anything, the planet's gonna be just fine. It's us that's not yeah. gonna be so great. It's us yeah. that's not gonna survive. Isn't that Neil deGrasse Tyson said something? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, and many, many other climate scientists. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a very quotable guy. Yeah, but but climate change is a myth. No, it's not. We're talking about myths. <laughs> I get so tired of people. No, Republican like brains that. are a myth. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Like just politician brains in general. That's true. I don't even think it's a partisanal. The one that really hurts my brain is the one about draining the energy from the sun. Oh, yeah, I mean, so. I don't see who could possibly. Idiots. Which, by the way, Bill and I met those guys, and, and I bet like, they ignored God everything he said. <laughs> huh? Because that's the fun thing about people like that. Is you can have as many facts as you want. They will ignore them and tell no. you they're ignoring them. No, I'm saying Bill and I met the guy who made the met the people who made the solar roadway panels. Oh, oh I thought you were yeah, saying yeah. that he met the people who said yeah. that they no, were he met the people. The sun. Yeah. <sighs> oh yeah, they had a picture taken. No, I'm pretty sure he'd just That's walk down, make them all stand single file so he can slap them individually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're about an hour and twenty minutes into the show, and I'm pretty sure twenty minutes of that wasn't actually spent about talking myths. At least. <laughs> Lol. But, uh, I think 20 minutes of it was is more... Yeah, probably. Because we like to ramble. Especially late at night on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. I apologize, guys. I was a lot less prepared for this show than I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, well, me too. we didn't really do a lot of actual topic discussion. Oh, so yeah. Okay. I got tired of talking by myself. I talked a little. I interrupted about three or four times. I drew a monkey. Yeah, but hey, I was trying to contribute, and then I got my facts all mixed up and had to look them up, and I was just letting Mason go from there. I was just like, nah, I give up. <laughs> I'd rather hear you talk than me talk. It's way less exciting to me. <laughs> but I think they did. Anyway, let's stop. <laughs> we should probably stop. We should. Yeah. I'm buried at. I me no form head sentence mic. is good. I can't bring it today. I have the dumb. Yeah. Usually. Um, all right. Well, we hope you uh, enjoyed this episode of the Nerd Effect Podcast. We have been your loyal hosts. Mark Morgan. Mason Ireland. And I am Dustin Vancouver, and we will catch you guys in a couple of weeks. Yay!